Let's look at vitreous hemorrhage. So, if the patient presents with floaters and again a sudden painless loss of vision. This is another cause of sudden painless loss of vision. It's vitreous hemorrhage. So, when you think of sudden painless loss of vision, the first thing you remember is retinal detachment. So, how will you differentiate between these two conditions? So, floaters are present in both of these conditions and both these present with sudden painless loss of vision. However, the differentiating feature is flashes. Flashes of light, we have seen photopsia in retinal detachment if you remember. Those are present here but absent in vitreous hemorrhage. That is how you are going to differentiate. So, this emphasizes the importance of taking your history of flashes. Okay. Now, let us look at vitreous hemorrhage, the different causes of it. The first commonest cause is diabetic retinopathy. Next, the trauma. It can be blunt or any perforating trauma and it can result in vitreous hemorrhage in young people. Whenever there is a vitreous hemorrhage in young non-diabetic people, you suspect trauma. However, if there is no history of trauma, we have a third condition called the Eels disease. It's a very famous disease, can be asked as a question again. So, the features are periphlebitis retina. There is an inflammation of the vessels of the retina characteristically it is present in young males and there is a spontaneous vitreous hemorrhage so there is a sudden painless loss of vision and it is recurrent it keeps absorbing and again the hemorrhage keeps occurring and it's most commonly associated with tuberculosis so whenever you think about eels disease please think about tuberculosis let's see eels disease it has four uh, three stages there is inflammation of the veins then occlusion resulting in ischemia and then the neovascularization which, calls, which causes the vitreous hemorrhage. So, your treatment would be to reduce the inflammation you will use systemic steroids and obviously because it is most commonly associated with tuberculosis you are having to give the anti-tubercular treatment to this patient. Okay. Next, now vitreous hemorrhage proper not eels disease how will you treat in general a case of vitreous hemorrhage is that you ask the patient to have a bed rest for at least three months so that the hemorrhage can absorb on itself and then you treat the underlying cause for example we have seen the eels disease and because of misfortune if this doesn't absorb in three months you will go for a procedure called the vitrectomy. Now, this is the vitreous hemorrhage which you are seeing and once this hemorrhagic vitreous has been removed by vitrectomy, see this is a post vitrectomy stage where you are able to see the features of retina very clearly.